Welcome to Out of the Box Radio with me, your host, Christine Blasdale. Out of the Box Radio is a weekly podcast of audible ear candy dedicated to bringing a fresh perspective on this thing that we call life. And each and every week, we're going to be diving into the topics that matter most with lively conversations on issues such as health, wellness, and transformational healing, all with the goal of creating a better world and becoming a happier human being. I will be your tour guide for this epic adventure, and each and every week we're going to be embarking on a journey with the ultimate goal being transformation to our highest potential. And now, let's get out of the box. Hello everyone and welcome back to Out of the Box Radio. I am Christine Blasdale and I'm very, very happy to have back on the program dear friend of mine, dear friend of the shows, and someone who... um, well, whose work has just really impacted my life, and uh, especially as of late. Uh, I want to welcome to the show Abigail Noel. Abigail Noel is a medical intuitive, master healer. Uh, what do you? What do we want? What do we want to? What do we want to call you again? What was the uh, appropriate title for you? Yeah, intu- intuitive therapist. Is intuitive therapist, but also twin flame camp counselor. Camp God counselor, damn it! Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't, not something I ever. And I think a lot of times with your destiny, that's true. But not something I ever uh, thought I'd be doing. Couples counseling was not. Uh, in fact, I, I had to ask my my guides one day, my team. I said, "What the heck?" I said, "I, I don't." You know, I haven't even had a successful relationship for God's sakes. Uh, I don't think I'm qualified for couples counseling. And that's when uh, the twin heart phenomenon. People call it twin flame. For me, my guidance, Father God, Abba, calls it a twin heart. He said it's the flame, the fire that we walk through that split the heart. Sweetheart, you are twin hearts, not twin flames. In fact, he's going on. He's telling me that, in fact, it's the elements that are used, um, you know, to to basically perfect uh, and make the heart divine. So it would be a twin heart, a heart partner. And what that is is a reflection that goes beyond a soulmate reflection it's a much stronger reflection right so. and and that's what i wanted to uh, to talk about today's show is all about twin hearts twin flames soulmates and sacred partners this is a uh, the the idea people maybe have heard about twin hearts obviously about soulmates but let's go back to the beginning and let's talk about um these these wonderful people that are in our lives for um to to really um i, I think to help us grow but also there is a reconnection um, aspect of it. Let's talk about this. Um, past lives and, and these people that have been um, an intricate part of those lives, and in this current lifetime, we're being reintroduced to them again, right? It, it, how, we've lived lives with these people before? Yes, well, each time, each time where, where, I'm, where I'm being asked to go back to to, to describe it, it's, and what's funny is it's, it's simple but complex all at the same time. So we don't mean to make simple today a complex subject, but every, each time a soul ascends, and ascension takes thousands of lives uh, each time, but each time a soul ascends, uh, they have the opportunity to split themselves uh, fem- masculine from feminine. Um, it seems to be mainstream thought that you only have one of these twin heart partners. That is not true. Uh, you will, as you evolve, um, have two, four, and then six of these twin heart reflections. They reflect every uh, every element, and it may challenge every aspect of who you are uh, to a greater purpose um, and to own your power. Um, so there are many of them. Uh, which I guess is one of the you know misnomers, and we take classes with each one of these uh, reflective uh, partners uh, until we earn or achieve that unconditional love. Well, actually, there is only unconditional love, but that idea that of unconditional love and that perfect partner. So once we've achieved the level of being able to have unconditional love, which from my understanding that that stems from ourselves originally but once we have that then we have the opportunity for that for that final life with um a sacred partner or what is a sacred partner let's put it that way that would make more sense what is the sacred partner we we earn a lifetime and a role with what's called a sacred partner by challenging different lifetimes with these twin heart reflective partners point being this You can have a hundred different scenarios of people who know they were guided by God into this 
love, mate, passionate relationship. And that's when everybody mistakenly says, this is my twin, you know, this is my twin heart, my twin flame. And mistakenly, they say, there's only one, there's only one. You may be here to contract it. It may be your destiny to have two relationships in one life with two of these reflective partners. And you may consciously know in both of these relationships that God guided you into them. Correct. But both of these relationships may be filled with love, but also with challenge challenges. So it could be a very fiery relationship, but it could also be one that you, that you built trust the hard way. You know, it could be someone, maybe one of the one of one of you cheated on the other one, and then forgiveness was there. These reflective partnerships are there to literally see if we've earned love, to see if they call it the classes of Corinthians, to see if you can be loyal, to see if you can forgive, if you will love a person anyway no matter what, even if that partnership or relationship or the sexual part of that relationship ends. Heaven wants to see, we're here to do one thing and that's to love like God. These reflective twin heart partners are the easiest for us to love. They're also the toughest sometimes um, for one or both to handle because the reflection is so strong. It causes us to see all of our light and all of our dark, which most, you know, we can most only, people don't want to see their dark. Most people don't want to see. You know, you got to get be ready, willing, and able to really look at. And until you're ready to look at your own dark without judgment and come to forgiveness, you, you won't fully have that for others. And that's that's the whole process of these twin heart reflections. It can hurt so so good <laughs> sometimes. It can hurt so good. It can also hurt so bad. So bad. <laughs> right. Okay. So so um, let's talk about the idea of of uh, again with how many. How many lifetimes would you say, I mean, if there's no number, I guess you can pinpoint it on, but we have walked this walk with, with these sacred partners or this, the, the, the twin hearts many times, correct? The average ascension, and this is an a the average number, it's in the midline, they call it, um, because it's different for each soul. It's 26,742 years. This was channeled to me. That's why I will never forget the number. <laughs> Don't even have to write it down. It's just channeled 26,742 years. How is that possible? People would say, well, that's possible because we live three to seven parallel lives with every character we create. So your character, Christine Blasdale, yes, has seven parallel lives. Same you with different scenarios and situations. For example, from one of the, my parallel lives, my father, who was a computer programmer in this life and crossed early in another life, becomes a professional baseball player and doesn't die early. So what we do is we watch how we're going to react or respond in each situation and scenario, each movie that we write. And we write these different challenges in to psychological, psychologically see how we'll respond because we're only here to master our emotions. Is that, <clears throat> I'm curious to find out, is that also uh, where sometimes you have like a deja vu Yes. experience and it's it's not exactly it, you know it, it's something that where you say I know I've done this before I've said this to you before or we've 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 had this conversation before um, almost like a bleeding through of those lives continuous mm -hmm. continuous lives um, well it's it, I love you said it. there's actually three reasons that that deja vu can happen one is just to let you know that you're on track so that's 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 part of it so it's it's a, a part just to let you know you're on track you've been here before number two what some people don't realize is God works through our intentions. Mom and daddy love, whatever your definition of religion is, the creator, God, source, love, uh, works through our intentions. So if your intention is good, but you mess up, there are literally times when God can go, cut, they just cut the whole movie. <laughs> cut, and he goes back over and they remind you of something and you get to do what's called a do-over. Okay, so anytime there's no major consequence involved and it was an innocent, uh, but, but you know, great intention, whatever that was, we get to run some scenes over. And sometimes we run that scene over and over and over and over until we get it right. Mm. Um, the last reason on uh, reincarnation, that's the one that you just brought up, I mean, or on deja vu, uh, why you see that is, is yes, because sometimes you're tapping into a parallel life that is very similar to the one that you're living. Mm. And it's what's what's wonderful is if you really know these things and you don't have to know them in, in any type of scientific, you don't have to explain it, you know, like Hawking, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be that or like Einstein, 
But with that said, if you have a general knowledge of knowing that, oh, okay, I, I could, this could be a parallel, this could be this, you can ask your guides, why did that just happen? And you can learn so much. They've shown me some of my, my do-over moments in life. And then you can see, oh, that's because I'm very challenged with whatever that aspect is, whatever's going on at that time. Um, how do you, how does somebody, because let's say, let's say someone who's listening to this right now is um, either in a relationship or or is interested you know in someone or there there is no one in their life right now they'll say they're 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 currently uh there is no one of quote unquote interest how do you know when you found uh your twin i kind of already know this answer but i'm doing it i'm i'm just i'm just saying that for the for the for the public people who are listening how do you know if when you when you have found uh, one of your twin hearts or twin flames or the final, you know, or the actual, the sacred partner that, that you're supposed to be with. Right. How, so how do you know? Those, when, and to, to clarify that, one of the twin heart partners in each lifetime we schedule to be with um, and they represent the elements. So, um, and again, that, that could, you, you may schedule in a challenging relationship. Um, what everyone thinks of as a sacred partner only comes into your life when you have mastered all six of the elements and then what they call your same same or sacred partner comes in someone who's there to master and experience the same element as you Boom. Okay. Um, and they have to have mastered all five of the other elements as well uh, which means they would most likely have five major loves or, or love candidates um, or major traumatic love incidents so it could also be the loss or death of a loved one five others attitude so that's that's another so it could be the the loss or death of five others or or um uh and not like a physical like not like they've just left the the the, the planet but also like a heartbreak type yes thing. Could, okay could be a heartbreak or it also could be because we don't all have we're not all here to challenge you know the five reflections as passionate lovers so this could be um the loss for me the loss of my brother was devastating. Okay, he was so a twin heart partner as well. So they don't have to be necessarily love interests. Correct. Okay. Correct. You're okay. twin heart partners until you're ready to challenge all five elements in one lifetime. Your twin heart partners will be grounded as sibling and parent partners often. So mother, father, brother, sister. Yes. Type thing, yes. and then a few. What a few thrown in romanticals. <laughs> then, well, then, then I love that you say that. So then, what you have before you're ready to challenge your twin heart partners, and when you split each time, so you first split, and now you've got you know one one twin, then you split again, and now you've got two reflections. You split again, right? And we keep splitting um, each time. But before you get to that point, and, and a soul's evolutionary process, we work with with soulmates, very close soulmates. In a lifetime, when you come in, you may experience, let's say, I'm just making up numbers, it's right. different for everyone, but let's say you have, you may have two major soulmate relationships in your high school and late teen years or something like that or into your 20s. And then, so those two prepare you for the more reflective twin heart challenge, that, that relationship that just blows you away, you're receiving all the signs, whatever that is, makes sense? So we prepare with soulmates for a greater reflection, which is called the twin heart reflection. Now you had said um, something about, you know, the signs. So, so when you do meet, um, not a soulmate per se, but the a t twin heart or perhaps the sacred partner, what are some of the signs, symptoms <laughs> um, that one can expect or one would experience when actually, um, you know, face to face or, or meeting that, uh, that person. Wow. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, again, it was, it's, uh, it's almost eight years ago that uh, I started working with, with people who were experiencing this phenomenon, probably going on nine. And, um, and, and in the last seven, I've spent um, understanding it through sessions and through people's personal experiences. And what I would say first off is people have all kinds of crazy stories. I mean, shooting stars they some people have felt like they were altered um when they know they didn't you know have any drugs or alcohol in their system um people feel a vi vibrating sensation when they get around that person their hair stands on end full chills they start recalling past lives 
because you because the the trigger your, yeah it's absolutely and it's scientifically based their vibration triggers yours it's written in your dna we share brain waves so their vibration and dna literally triggers you to uh, into your sense memories and um, your subconscious mind so that you will trigger past life emotions that need to be cleared so that relationship is to bring up everything that you're hiding from or a greatness that you're not seeing about yourself you see it through that other person um where were we just just going through the signs uh signs how do you know so um big time vibrating around that person you will often um start to feel better you will heal in their presence often and again guys this could be in the honeymoon period it doesn't mean this relationship is going to go on and on and on forever you're going to take your class with this person and it does not mean when it ends that it wasn't a twin heart that it was some sort of fake and you know you'll hear people get all mad and start calling them names no they're just as triggered and confused and, and as you are Um, about the whole situation and the one who doesn't wake up that's the one who needs more love and our class when we get in that situation anytime we feel we've been rejected guys and believe me this is hard I have worn the crown the rejection crown for 48 years now uh, being psychic and and being a a pretty strong-minded woman um, you know is 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 tough for the male energy so my relationships have been tested at best so these very powerful starts to these relationships guys does not always mean they're going to last forever what it means is is heaven wants to see if you're going to love that person anyway you've got to earn your same same sacred partner relationship and you may or may not do it in this time but I love it they play that song all the time love the one you're with love the one you're with now if you know you should love someone else loving someone doesn't mean staying in a relationship it doesn't mean you have to have that romantic partnership it means that you can understand that relationship needs to go in a different relationship a different way but you don't just dump that person out love is eternal when that powerful those powerful signs are there and you know that this was guided by God you know that this is a soulmate when you've seen that even if that other person doesn't wake up guys you hold a space of love for them from a distance and through the process. This is the most powerful part about the twin heart reflections. And again, that doesn't make them all imposters. They, those are your twins. You better look at what part you don't think you don't like in them and find what, what little asshole is in you. You know, if you're like, well, he's a giant asshole, find the small asshole in you. How do I know that? Because I took this class. One time I asked God, I was talking to my team, I said, oh my God, you keep sending me these assholes. (laughs) And I hear everyone in my team laughing like Christine. And they said, Abigail, we just brought you a bigger disco ball of reflective shit for you to find your own asshole in you, your internal asshole in you. Find the smaller one in you just because you're not as big an asshole. And then it was explained to me, the bigger the asshole, the more love they need. This, this, pers- this beautiful man that, that God walked me into this relationship with was very broken. Um, he had a very broken, broken, broken. I mean, was my life easy? No. But his one through five years was tougher than mine. And when you, oh, it's going to make me cry. When you take away, when you, when you don't bring a child up those first five years in a nurturing relationship, they don't know how to receive love. And you bring someone along and you know, I, I, can, I, can, I can be a big bear and I can be an asshole like anyone, but I'm just full of love. I know that. It's like Christine. We just want to give it to everybody. And that scares broken people. They don't even know how to respond. And what happens is they, they oftentimes respond in anger and, um, and what they need is more love. So you just back off. And yes, you, you're, if your heart's broken, then you've got to love yourself more. That's the other part. So that's the other part of these, this beautiful twin heart, you know, through the process of forgiving them, through the process of forgiveness is how you learn to come to your own authentic nature. It is how you learn who you are because you learn to forgive yourself in that process. You will literally recognize where you are willing to forgive others and not forgiving yourself. You have to, right? You have to be able to forgive yourself, um, and, and for and for even for being you know because some people will beat themselves up for being in a relationship with someone who's if they turn out to be abusive or or lying or cheating or whatever they they're they're hurting their their, their heart uh or their their partner's heart but that you in order to to move on and to find that ultimate sacred partner too which is what we've come here to do you need to um 
forgive yourself because we always beat up ourselves. I mean, we, we, we do, we'll, we'll blame it on the other person. We'll say that he was an asshole or, you know, whatever, but we, we get angry at ourselves internally and we, maybe we don't speak it to other people. Like, what's wrong with me? You know? Right. That and, and how stupid was I or whatever. Why did I say that? I shouldn't have exactly. told him this. But once you forgive that. your, once you forgive yourself for that and you realize that, 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 that relationship, even if it was hurtful, harmful, that there was something there for you to learn, a class for you to learn, then you can move on um, and ultimately love yourself as much. Because it's you're right, they're all reflections of, of us, right? Well, love is really brave and strong. To have an unconditional love in your life, you've got to love yourself unconditionally. And to be brave and strong, you've got to first be brave enough to be vulnerable. And that's what these relationships are for, is to allow yourself to go ahead and be vulnerable. Um, and, and in that even process, after being strong, hurt, even after being hurt. And again, it's, it's to understand that it, we're here to do one thing and that's to show our capacity for love and to love someone anyway. Mother Teresa has a quote, um, and I, I don't know it verbatim in this moment, but I, I just, the concept feels so good to me. I mean, basically she said that y you win. I mean, you, you win when, when you can love somebody past the pain. So when you love past the pain, um, you're home. You're absolutely home. And I, I can tell you that's that's 100% true. I've been given a lot of opportunities. We all do to love past the pain. And uh, and I love them all past the pain. So it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> now, let's let's talk about um, the uh, when you when let's say when you have mastered all of these other classes with the twin flames the, and what and like you said that some had called them false twin flames but they are they are twin reflections and you've mastered them and you're ready um and you are ready to uh to to meet your sacred partner let's talk about the things that we um that maybe uh, that maybe happened to you as you are going to because it's a reunion in many respects but as that reunion happens that that physical reunion because there, there might be situations where you connect with someone and you're not necessarily physically with them but you're just communicating with them by be it by you know by phone or 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 um, some you know chance meeting um let's talk about that if we can a little bit more about the the importance of the two of you getting together and what that what that does not just for you individually but also for the planet because I know that's really an important aspect as well when somebody when somebody uh, when somebody masters the elements uh, and you also have to master the astrological signs both. and but when both of them do both uh, partners do and they come back together um, that ascension because it's a it's a part it's a partner ascension at that point um, and many of the twin hearts that come together as sacred partners will cross often very close together within months because when the other, once they come together and their bodies heal, so it's very, very, the energy is just incredible and a very healing time for both of them. Um, when they disconnect, you will also go downhill after that very quickly. Makes yeah. makes sense um so and that's that's all by design so that they don't stay on the planet there's no reason after you come together with your sacred partner to stay on the planet without them it would be excruciating i just i just got a full heart blast wow yeah there and and your purpose would be gone because once you come together um these partnerships well I as far as science goes and the vibration it's recognized uh by heaven exponentially 10 times 10 times 10 thousand is what i was told that's a lot <laughs> so every time these twins come together it raises the vibration here on the planet 10 times 10 times 10 thousand um as compared to a single ascension single ascender as they call it so that's the beautiful part and you've lived thousands and thousands of lives apart you do 12 together and all of those past lives have to be alchemized and reconciled um, any reparations so what happens before the twins will come together is um, almost always both will have vivid dreams um, of past lives um, 
many things. So he might be talking on the phone. Oh my God, I had a dream last night. I was in Spain. There were the cliffs. Oh my God, I was there. Did you see the parrot? Yes, I saw the, oh my God, baby. You know what I mean? So you'll right. get these really phenomenal, magical things that'll happen. There's also a physical dialogue um, that goes on as well. Carl Jung uh, tapped into the synchronicities and wrote all about the theory of think synchronicity. There's a physical dialogue, which are the 22s, which is crazy because when you and I met, wow. we, yeah. in the first five minutes we met, I said, hey, what's up with the 22? And you've got a 22. It's always been your number tattooed on your left arm. Um, so the 22 is big 11 22 is about building a solid foundation in love that's what you've got to do by mastering uh, all of the elements and all the astrological science to come to a balance in yourself to qualify for this love relationship again guys you may be here to have a perfectly lovely life with one of these twin partners but you're going to do your challenges and continue taking classes they might be fire and you might be earth it may just may not be a same same partnership but please don't discount it and say that it's not a twin heart relationship i hope i'm making sense um with that said uh the other uh, g the geese are the master totem because geese are the most loyal animal on the planet uh, a goose never lets another goose die alone. A goose will actually give its life for another so that a goose will not die alone. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. And they, they will give their life for their partner because if their partner gets sick, they both drop down out of the flock. A goose is only safe because of the flock. So a lone goose is a dead goose. So the partners will stay together and, and, and almost always die together. But if not, um, a widowed and widower goose will get together because they don't allow each other to be alone. Isn't that wonderful? But they, mate, they do mate for life. So the goose, I'll start looking for geese. If you want to know if you have um, a partner, come, a twin heart partner coming in, 67 is the number of the high priestess in 85 is the number of the high priest. Both are 13 combinations, which is Mother Mary's number. That's important because this is the Isis Osiris project. This was Mother Mary's idea. And the only reason we got a second chance after Atlantis on the planet is because of these very brave group of souls that agreed to split themselves masculine from feminine a long time ago and make this trip 26,742 years, thousands of lives, 12 together. You come together with your sacred partner in the 13th and many of the sacred partners um, from these times of Atlantis, the original splits as they call it um are coming together now for heaven right i just now. got chills it's historical full chills. chills did you feel that oh my god full got, chills it's i just got chills amazing. that read it first they went down my arms and then it went right down my yep. neck i got the same thing right down my neck so let's talk about that because let's talk about right now um do we, do we do you are you getting any hits on why it is now in, in this well we're we are in we're in the, the the bible calls it the book um which is which is you know we, we know it's not it is fallible it's very fallible but um the book calls it the end times it's a new beginning it's a new psychic beginning for the world revelation is an amazing new beginning and that's what we're in we're in the times of revelation what does it mean well scientifically and science belongs to god scientifically what it means is the the uh, vibration on the planet has never been higher and there has never been more truth more light on the planet so people are seeing more truth um i gotta tell you there's going to be some big changes on the planet in the next 22 years he just told me to tell you 22 years guys what happens is this when 51 percent of the planet just 51 percent wakes up and understands that being psychic is your it's your divine nature that that communicating with god in your own way was always your birthright mm. And that God is always, always, always the plan to be able to speak to our heavenly team. Why on earth would a, would a great creator, something that we know is the most powerful force, literally infinite possibilities, create a hierarchy of angels? Most people believe in the angelic realm and send them and tell us they're here to assist us. But you can't hear them and they can't hear you. No, you need to go to a priest for that. Oh, yeah, good God. And yes. you need to pay your tithing. You need to pay 10%. 10 percent to yeah. your God. Ten percent and for eternal and life. Ten percent and you get a free toaster. No. <laughs> Wait, you know what's so funny? This one time one time dad's dad told me to tell the Catholic Church because they're they're losing people, right? So they yeah. keep they keep making mass shorter forty five minutes, right? He said, Tell them to get rid of those wafers and wine and serve donuts and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> He said, then you can tell for 10%, you get breakfast and eternal life. There you go. Right? Free donuts. Continental breakfast. 
the the uh this this whole for for me i mean personally for me this whole journey has just been really magnified in the last uh well just in the last last few months uh, in particular but the idea of actually um meeting that other s part of you or that reflection of you that is ready to take this next giant you know giant step giant leap of really having full faith that you are it's it it's almost like equating and i'm not saying that that i'm not saying that i am feeling like i am god okay i'm not saying that but that said for me since i've met my but god is love and we're yes. supposed to feel like love uh, we, and exactly and and i yes exactly and, and no one's saying that they're the master of all and oh no, yeah it, no infinite powers no no, no no saying you're to, you're to reflect it, her so exactly. i say you are and uh, that touching into like that with with the with the partner, um, you know, the sacred partner, the twin flame um, uh, journey that I'm on right now. This love that I feel for this other human being is beyond. It's beyond anything I've ever felt. It's beyond what um, it's beyond a romantical love. It's beyond a sexual love. It's beyond a maternal love. But it's almost as if it's a combination all of, of them. all of those yeah and it's a combination of all of those but like magnified if that makes any sense yes 100 percent. absolutely magnified it's and what intense. i've noticed is um we have finally been able to have a reunion where we've been actually able to be physically in the same space together for a number of days and i'll tell you abby that 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 combination that alchemical a combination of our energies together wherever we were um it was as if it was as if everything just opened up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if there was a sh if there was like a detour or a setback oh, yeah. or whatever it unfolded to something even better oh yeah absolutely because you, when you're on your destiny track doors start flying open when flying these, open. when these twin heart partners come together because remember this this energy is recognized 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, 10,000, right? I, I threw one when I was a 10 there. Man, uh, that, it's all energy, it's all vibration, just like Einstein's theory of relativity. So that's a powerful, powerful force of amazing, loving, great intention. Not to mention, but that love is seen. See, people don't realize, we, we feel more than we hear. And people think, oh, well, I didn't say that. It doesn't matter if you thought it, the energy's there. Yeah. The, en the thought and the energy has been created whether you spoke the words or not. God does not speak English. He doesn't press two for Spanish either. He speaks the language of the heart. We can all do it. We can feel our way through life like the starfish if we choose. So yes, when these twin hearts come together, man, it's powerful. Um, people, you don't, you don't have to speak things for people to notice it. We feel uh, more than we hear. And so they literally feel the love of these partnerships which is incredibly powerful it Not, changes them oh big time it changes them yeah people start to believe the, uh, Chills. um just in m my you know w um walking around w my my partner and i we had uh, met in maui and of course everything did open up like whatever the prop whatever like something that looked like a setback uh we we were able to literally change like boom immediately and it became a better scenario, but also the reaction that we had from people just by our presence. This is what I was blown away with, because I, because I, I know I was in heaven. I know that I was so absolutely happy to be um, with this beautiful, beautiful soul. But the people that were around us, we, I mean, it. We had to actually stop and just take notice of it. But it was, um, it was absolutely incredible that they shifted their energy whatever the situation was um it it is quite magical in that respect but from my understanding too is that this energy not only is it affecting the people uh, obviously around us that we come in contact with but people that we don't even we haven't even, we don't even we haven't even uh seen or 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 uh interacted with mm -hmm. are also getting impacted by this um one thing that since we've come back, you know, we've um, we've shared with our friends and, and family and people and, and just acquaintances, people who don't know us that well. Uh, we've shared some of our, the photos of those moments 
right? Well, you showed me the video and I was bawling. You, she was crying. I was crying in the restaurant. Everyone's looking at me. Christine shows me this video. I just start watching. I am bawling. I mean, it was what she's talking about is you um, lost it. when first um, time you met. The first time we met, we've 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 known each other and communicated and um, gotten so very close over six months. And this was. Um, the very first time that we got to be physically in each other's presence and we met like halfway basically we, we met in Hawaii and uh, and I had and I was there at the airport and I was so nervous and I was I, I, I was I've never been so anxious and uh, and nervous in my entire life for anything and um, I was just like shaking I remember just like absolutely shaking and there was a, a couple people there at the airport small small airport and there were a couple people there waiting for some uh, folks to come off the plane and I asked a stranger I asked this guy uh, I told him a little bit I go this is the first time I'm gonna meet her and I'm so I'm crazy in love and oh my god my. so I said can you just take a video of of this uh, of the first moment that we actually get to see each other and he said Oh, I'd be honored. You know, he, he was like, of course, this is so awesome. So he took my phone. I had in my phone to a perfect stranger here, take it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and he videotaped our first embrace, our first, the first moment when we were actually face to face. And I've shown that only to a couple people that video, because it is so I, I when I see it, I, I lose my stuff, man. I, 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 I cry. But I showed it to a couple people, and every single person has just cried, joy. But I mean, but just because we cause love it's you. Beautiful. But it's but it's beautiful, even if you yeah. don't oh, know yeah. who even I if, am. Even if you don't know, it's just beautiful to see that kind of love. Yes. And that's what I was saying is that pe people who are just acquaintances, when they see um, just the image, just the energy, the energy coming off of the photos, it's changed them. Mm -hmm. People who have preconceived notions about what you know, what relation, what love is. Um, people who have put uh, who put people in boxes right. who say, "Well, are you this? Are you that? Are you gay? Are you this? Are you uh, you know?" We're all love. of that. We're just love. It's just pure love, yeah. and it's changing them. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about people who are hardcore set in their beliefs, mm -hmm. and it's just that to me is the power. And that's just from a photo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's not us walking <clears throat> together in life, right. you know, day to day, and and uh, impacting people. But that's just from a photograph. So that's the power of love. That's just a little tiny power of love. But also from my understanding is the twin hearts, when when you do, or the sacred partners, when you do get to actually physically connect, there is an anchoring, if not, right? Uh, an anchoring of love that does impact the, the planet on ways that we don't even know. Oh, 100%. And also you've got an arc of love. And that's why, you know, we were talking about this, so why sometimes it's the distance because there's, yeah, there's why is there distance Abby because there's why is there so many dang miles in between twins because look at all that there's a gorgeous arc of love that is there every day 24 7 now between you and Trace in Australia and we are literally bubble wrapping the world. And you know, it doesn't, and <laughs> we, we are. We're, we're, Wait, say that again. We're, we're bubble wrapping we're bubble the world. We're bubble wrapping the planet with love. Make sure it doesn't get That's hurt. That's right. We don't want to hurt anymore. We're going to bubble wrap her with love and send it all over, which is on another, on another note, it doesn't, it's, it, it, it goes beyond the, you know, love partner, passionate relationships as well. You can be very passionate about your friendships. And many of us, you know, in the, and not, not to go on a different subject, but uh, Prince Rogers Nelson, the rock, rock star who, who was murdered, um, he brought together an, an entire and awakened so many people all over the planet. And there's such a love for, you know, in this, in what we call our, our purple soul family. And there's such a love that we are sending love every wow. day. So I'm sending love to Lou in London and Lou's sending love to someone in Denmark, you know what I mean? To star in, I think she's in Denmark, I, if I, you know what I mean? And so we've just got love going all over the place. And, she, and then I'm sending love to Zab in Australia and you know, we've got our Australian crew. And now everyone's getting networked and connected. It's beautiful. This whole community of people who, and, the, and that's, these are these people who are awakening to their divine psychic um, uh, abilities are also the people who are coming together with their twin hearts. That's the whole point. Um, is to have a partnership where both people are aware of their psychic nature and divine guidance of God's participation and presence, mom and daddy loves participation and presence in their lives, and who actually see that magic happening. That is powerful because when you take when you take uh, belief into knowing, that's that's Einstein's theory of relativity. When you when you know it, that's where you go. 
So when you've got two people together with, you know, one main goal, and that doesn't mean that they do everything together. It doesn't, sometimes these partnerships um, are very, two very independent people who might not even live together all the time, but come together. But in their own right, that partnership will be incredibly powerful, Mm. incredibly powerful. And then, and also, so, um, what you're saying too is the importance of those twins or sacred partners to know their to to embrace their psychic abilities or to to understand that they already that they have that power these are these are to be psychic partnerships 100 percent psychic meaning divine guidance it was always what was intended understanding god's participation in their life and the co-creative process that's why you'll see the six nine a lot 69 sits over the high priestess's head and and actually what it means is two people coming together the six is the uh, masculine version of that symbol the nine is the feminine six nine literally represents two people coming together in co-creative bliss understanding god's presence and participation in their life because again now you've got two people working towards the same goal knowing that god's behind you that's a whole lot of power infinite possibilities not only that but then you've got this unconditional love that's between them that even when it's not spoken people just see it and they feel it in their presence even if those two people are across the pond and just communicating through videos people will still see that relationship you don't have to be in that other person's physical presence for someone to understand that bond and that connection that love's felt from anywhere. Wow. Wow. So, um, so with the, with the, the divine love that is, that is, that is generated, let's say between these two, um, what are some, what are some ways that that can be channeled to, help each other to help the planet a little bit more? Is it a focused meditation or not meditation, but is it a focused, um, saying, setting out that intention or is it just staying in the love? Is it just, just loving the crap out of them? Focused way of life (laughs) and doing whatever, whatever works for each partnership. But, um, but yes, when they're in each other's presence, they will, it's just by nature. They'll want to spend time together. So they will do a lot of things together when they are in each other's same geolog- you know, geological location. But what can they do? Um, what keeps coming up is <clears throat> there really are some um, beautiful Tantra practices. It doesn't mean you have to get into all the rules and regulations, but um, being very explorative sexually that's the first place that god's taking me um because you want to have a good time there but what he's really showing me uh, about some of the tantra practice is is the the most beautiful thing to do and that's just going to enhance the sexual aspect anyway is to honor that person every like every day and there's a, a little practice that you do where you make a list of the things that you love that you see in that person that you want to bring out more in yourself because you understand that that person is a reflection of you Mm -hmm. and so telling that person every day what you love about them is it just got full chills it's the most important thing you'll do that's just going to bring more of that love in and, and keep that reciprocal energy going um second um things like meditation and doing yoga together bike riding boogie boarding, surfing, walks on the beach, anything that you would do spiritually um, on your own, uh, you incorporate. It doesn't mean that you don't have your own practices as well. Again, these are two very independent people who love unconditionally. And this is a big one. This is a relationship that sets no expectations on the other, right. none whatsoever. Right. I mean, if that if that person, it's a great story, the founder of the freedom. body shop, freedom. total freedom. Anita Roddick, her, her husband came to her when she was pregnant and had a two-year-old daughter and said he had to go ride his bicycle across South America for two years on a spiritual journey. And when she told me his story, I said, oh my God, I said, weren't you mad? And she said, no, I love him. I said, couldn't he have thought of a better time to go? Like, oh my God, you're about to have a baby. Or whatever she goes, she goes, don't you think that he knew that timing? He needs to go, he needs to go, you'll be fine. I mean, like amazing woman. She literally started body shop to support herself while he was gone. And when he got back in two years, she was opening her second shop. She had, and then she started a whole huge. Oh, the only fair trade uh, industry still today in the cosmetic company. I hope L'Oreal is taking care of it uh, because she's no longer here with us. But the beautiful thing is when her husband got back after two years and saw what she had done, full chills, he was so proud of her that he dedicated his life after that to supporting her and supporting that mission that she was so passionate about and they had an amazing extraordinary remarkable life together and he was 
just doted on her after that because he knew that she trusted and let him do that. So there was so much freedom and trust in their relationship because she let him go. You just you just touched on the most important thing, and I think um, something that uh, becomes evident because it just is w- with the sacred partner or or the the twin um, that trust and the the absolute unconditional love and the trust. It's 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 almost a trust and a faith not only so much in that other person, but that everything is, is going to be okay. Is that everything is going to be okay. And it is a, it is the strangest, um, it's the strangest thing. It's the strangest feeling. It's not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow, but having, having absolute faith and trust. It's that falling backward thing where I was talking before was, um, uh, earlier about when you're a kid and you, and you do that thing where you, you know, your back is turned and you fall backwards and you're trusting that these people, these, you know, your friends are going to catch you. That to me is a little bit about this whole, uh, twin heart, twin flame, sacred partner journey too, is knowing that you're going to be caught. And I don't know if that's, you're going to be caught by, by God's love or the universe or the, or, or your partner. But I think when you look at your partner, you do see, you do see God, you do see love. I, I, as well right mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. well and the, the, the going back to this as well what was coming in for me when I was listening to you talk about the trust aspect <clears throat> as well it's it's that you're gonna love them anyway it you you have the same love so if anyone wants to know is this a twin heart reflection or a sacred partner um, if it's a sacred partner it's gonna be smooth damn sailing and we're not all here for one of those okay um, most of, well, anyway, so sacred partner, is it a sacred partner? You're going to love them like you love your child. Bingo. Even if they lie to you, <laughs> betray you, I mean, whatever it is that you think you do. And remember, your energy asked for that energy to come into your life mm. for some reason. It doesn't mean that you're wrong and they're right or they're right and you're wrong. There is none of that. You can't play wrong and right. We are not proper judges, nor do we even understand the classes that we're in fully, that we're not supposed to. That's so heaven can see if we're going to respond, react, and if we're going to love somebody anyway. That's, that's the rules. If you want a love relationship in your life that looks like, you know, that is that unconditional, uh, no expectations, first you've got to give it to yourself. You have to be willing to give it to another And if you want that, then the greatest thing you'll do is start loving everyone in your life anyway. I don't care how bad they were to you. I don't care what happened. Find at least acceptance for the situation and find how that situation made you stronger. I'm not saying it's not painful. I'm not saying it's not hard. And you may feel a lot of frustration and anger in this process. But what you will find ultimately is you will find where you are not forgiving yourself, where you are not forgiving yourself. I was working with, you know, my perception in my own life of what was the most extreme betrayal I had felt just a few years ago. And to me, it was just like the war. I just couldn't even believe everyone connect that this person would do this. Oh, my God. Um, And I was so angry that I wished that that person would be removed from the planet in some way. I literally asked God, I told God one day that I, I could have said, could you send a flying bus? You know, just like a literally a city <laughs> bus through the air to land on him and squash him flat so that everyone would know it was an act of God and no one would have to be too sad. Um, and that was the day that he sat my ass down and for three hours I worked on coming to a place of forgiveness uh, for this person and I was on the floor crying uh, after three hours, just sobbing because I found all the places. I, you know, I was angry. I was angry because I felt like I was being asked to forgive that person more than I gave myself. I was being asked to forgive them for things that I was still being hard on myself for. And what's funny is I, I connected to it. I said, what's the emotion? Furious, I told God. I'm furious. And he said, no one told you to do that. You can forgive yourself right now. I was like, wow. And it was just this eye-opening experience where I found, you know, this place. And after that, I, I've, I've been able, we, we're, we're friends now. It's wonderful. Wow. We're friends and, you know, we're supportive now. Well, I, do I, do I, am I still a little bit leery? 
You know what I'm saying? Yes. I don't know if I'd hand him my phone. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, right. You can. Well, you can. You can. You can <laughs> send that love to another person and realize that they're not um, healthy to be. They're not. They're not healthy to have in your life again um, because of their own things that they need to go through and their own, um, you know, healing that they need to do. But that fact that you're able to forgive yourself and the forgiveness in general um, is huge. I know it is. It is huge. Um, let's, I want to talk just really briefly cause, uh, we've got a little bit of time left and I want to talk about this idea. You had tapped, you touched into it a little bit and then maybe it was on the tantric, um, discussion, but with the, the, the sacred partners or the, the twins, um, one thing that I have noticed and I'm curious is to find out what your, um, uh, hit is on this and, and, and what your own perspective is, is that when you are when you are with the twin or the sacred partner, there is a, there seems to be, well, obviously there is no, there are no roles. There are no roles because you've lived so many lifetimes together, but there seems to be also this beautiful blending dance of both uh, masculine and feminine energies between the two where um, you go in and out of mm -hmm. of different you might be um one partner might be more masculine have a more masculine energy the other a more a more feminine uh, a grounding energy but then they they kind of uh blend and switch without notice mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> they just kind of go in and out which yeah. is which is absolutely incredible and beautiful for 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 the for the people who who uh for embrace watching. that yeah, yeah, well yeah. and the people who embrace that but maybe for other people they're they're not very they're so used to those roles you know well what you're, what you're hitting on is exactly why most people don't feel and don't have that relationship in their life that's exactly what they want you know what i mean because I, they're they've identified with just a particular role of being of the feminine energy yes the yes they're not completely they yes they're still scared of aspects of their own boy or girl wow. inside themselves wow. um we are all boys and girls both thank you inside um and so you know I exactly that when someone's ready willing and able uh to embrace that and and really what it is you, you, how do you get that you walk alone you, you you walk alone and and you own your power in these relationships the rejection is literally for you to own your power you know in both sides masculine and feminine depending on you know what the challenge is that that comes in but these sacred partnerships are are earned it's when two people who literally have earned their stripes as they call it you'll start seeing zebra stripes penguins black and white animals the orca black and white animals of any kind they are the bravest on the planet um and when you start receiving a lot of that and 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 also you know just black and white cars black and white color um i'd also say the 22 because when you strike that balance, it means that you have built that solid foundation in self-love. And until you have that, you will not attract it to yourself. Of, we see a lot of the 22s. Oh, my gosh. I mean, she, she does. She yeah, sees yeah. a lot of it, too. And the 11s. And the 11, the one, 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 like, up, you know, crazy. Yep. All the time. All the time, all the time. Mm -hmm. Because you guys, you guys met on the 11th of June. Yeah, physically. We, that was yep. the, first, um, the first day was the 11th. And, um, it's all over the place on the phones, uh, with conversations at exactly particular times. It'd be one, 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 or, um, when you just f sit up and look at something that's a clock, 55 envelopes moving forward fast. And you've got your, uh, dapper boy hat right above it. That's right. <laughs> moving forward, moving fast, forward fast. I love the idea though, too, that when, you, when, when, when two people have mastered, embracing both the masculine and feminine within them that is when wow that is when you really take off oh yeah yeah you take off in every way that's what we're here to do that is your authentic nature i mean it is that is that striking that balance which is beautiful um and the, moving away from those roles is beautiful which leads me back to here what I, what I love about it as well god's been talking to me about a lot about this and, and abigail my ego doesn't really want to talk about it because i wouldn't think that i you know, my ego is qualified to, um, but God has been talking to me about racism and prejudice and things like that. And these labels that we put on, and we, we touched on it a little bit the other day. It, 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 I, I, what I would dream of, and this is what God said, if he had it his way, none of us would have those labels. There would be no, there would be no label. You, you lesbian, gay, there's love, 
Hi, what are you, love? What are you, love? Hi, what are you? I'm love. Are you a boy or a girl? I'm love. Yeah. Are you a boy or a girl? I'm both. I'm both. Yeah. Today, I'm a little more girl. <laughs> I'm hanging out with Marilyn. Tomorrow, I'm going to hang out with Jimi Hendrix. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be a little rock star. Yeah. You know, and the same thing with, um, with racism. We give it power by continuing to talk about it. If we stop talking about it, it doesn't exist. So, I, I, you know, I challenge anyone who, who, whose heart says that's a great idea. Next time someone asks you if you're straight or gay or this or that or what's your nationality, just say love. Yeah. I'm from the planet of love, the country of love. But you're, <laughs> <laughs> you like sex? I love sex with who? Everybody. Yay. <laughs> I think that's the way we should do it. What a great way to end the show. <laughs> that's a great way to end the show. <laughs> oh, Abby, I want to um, I want to thank you so much for for being with me today and being through this whole journey. You you are um yes, I you know we we kid around with the name the, the Twin Flame Camp Counselor, but you really have been my my sounding board, the person that I've gone to with so much and just to reiterate the I, I think this whole journey, you've, you've been along with me on this whole journey. Uh, not only the podcast with Out of the Box Radio, but of course my own personal life. And I'm very, very private um, person. So you, you, have a, you have the bat cave key, so to speak. Thank you. you. I'm honored. See, you get to see inside a little bit of Christine. I'm honored. A lot about Christine. Um, uh, if folks want to, because I know there's, there's a lot of people that are excited about, they've heard the show now, and they're, they've got a lot of questions still, and they want to know, um, possibly what's happening in their life. Uh, how do they get in touch with you to book a session? I think that's really important to mm -hmm. let people know that they can book a session with you. Why don't you give them the information on yeah. that? It's uh, it's abigailnoel.com, A-B-I-G-A-I-L-N-O-E-L.com. You can go to the schedule a session page, schedule your own session. And uh, there's a uh, there's a key there for uh, making payments as well. And we've been doing for out of the box to the uh, boot camp, so it's four sessions. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So for out of the box uh, radio listeners, you get a major discount. And uh, is it a, the boot camp? Is there a button? There's a there's a, a link on the front page that you can go to, and then you can just message me when you set your first appointment that you're going to do the four session boot camp, or you can just do. A uh, one-off one session, session to, to check it out. And there's a lot of options on there. So Okay. And then just make sure when you do book your session, uh, let her know that you heard it on Out of the Box Radio so we know how far and wide this program is uh, is being heard. And um, and I want to thank, uh, thank you for listening today to Out of the Box Radio. If you've missed uh, any of this program or if you want to catch up on some of the older programs, you can find out. You can go to um, – you can go uh, subscribe to uh, iTunes – iHeartRadio. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel of Out of the Box Radio. And of course, uh, please do make sure that you share this particular program. It will be up on, uh, on YouTube and you can share that in emails and post it on your, um, on your own social media so that other people can hear it. It's uh, really important for everybody to realize that, you know, we're not, this isn't, we didn't just land here on this planet just half ha half, haphazardly, uh, and, and there is a great importance to, um, to every relationship mm -hmm. that we have. And, um, and I just really want to thank you again, Abby, for, for coming mm -hmm. and making that really clear to thank us. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm honored. So until next time, I want to remind you to always, always think outside of the box. See you next week. Take care.